Good morning. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Fitbit API to access your Fitbit data, and then use Python to pass that data and store it in an Excel file. I'll try my best to explain each step, but a lot of the complicated work is done by Fitbit themselves. Please feel free to leave a comment if there's anything you don't quite understand. First thing we need to do is get registered with the Fitbit API. We'll need a Fitbit account, so just go ahead and create one or log in with your Gmail account. Once that's done, go to dev.fitbit.com and then mouse over manage and click on register an app. It should tell you that you have to log in to continue, so just click on the login button and fill in your details. You're now taken back to the register an app page with a form to fill in. So I've already filled in my application details, but I'll just go over them. So for your application name, you can kind of put anything, uh, same for the description. For the application website and all of the terms of service URI, I just leave it as google.com. Same for organization, can be really anything you want. Uh, the important stuff is for OAuth 2.0 application type, you want to make sure it's personal. I accidentally left it as server here. Uh, OAuth 1.0 can be left as browser as the default. Callback URL, you want that to be, I find 127.0.0.1 works. Uh, default access type, I leave it as read only since we're only reading information. Finally, once all that's done, you want to check that you've agreed to the terms of service and register your application. We'll be taken to a page with all the information about your application, client secret, uh, 2.0 client ID. Just remember that and record it somewhere. Now we're going to want to authorize our application to talk to the Fitbit API. This will be using the information from the previous screen. Um, your client ID, your client secret, all of that stuff. Actually, client secret will not be needed. Um, you want to basically construct this URL using the information from the page below, switching where needed. Um, the top part is the fitbit.com or to authorize URL, which will be the same for you. The main things you'd want to change are your client ID. You want to change that with yours. Um, if you've kept the same redirect URI, it'll be the same as mine, one up here. Um, the final thing is the scope, which is essentially all the information you'll be requesting. I recommend just leaving that default, it'll make things easier. Um, finally, you'd want to maybe change the expires in. 104,800 is about a week. Uh, you'll probably want to change that to something more so that uh, you can go up to a month or a year by changing the number. Once you've constructed that URL, what you're going to want to do is go to your web browser, copy it and paste it into the URL bar and hit enter. You'll be taken to the Fitbit authorization page where you can basically, you want to allow all, it'll give you some information about what your application is requesting. You can allow all or deny it some, just you know allow it all since it's yours, and then click the allow button. You'll be redirected back to your redirect URL, which, will, which cannot be reached. But that's okay, that's normal. Now, what we're gonna wanna do is go to the URL bar and you'll see that it's changed. It's actually returned our access token. So just copy the entire URL and paste it into some Word document. You'll see here the URL has our, both our access token and the user ID. We want to save both in somewhere that you can access because uh, later we'll be putting it into our Python file. Now you're going to want to open up an IDE, your choice, to code your Python script. I've chosen to go with VS Code because it's free. Um, you'll, you're, we're going to need some libraries to better access the Fitbit APIs. Um, these libraries are up here. So first you'll need to install them with pip. Once you've installed this library, simply copy them into your code editor and we can proceed. Here's some example code I've written to retrieve the 
daily steps of me for me. Uh, I'll go through them in more in detail later, but for now, simply note that I run the script and it returns a JSON object with the date and the amount of steps I've taken as of today. Breaking down the code further, we'll go through it step by step. So the first step is to create an activity request object. And using request.get, I point it to the Fitbit API. I make a request to the Fitbit API in the following format. Uh, at user ID, I sub it in with my user ID for my profile. I'm telling it to get under activities to get the steps for today. Uh, and it's returning a JSON file. For authorization type, it is bearer and I send it the access token we've saved earlier. Once I've retrieved the request object, I print the status code to better understand if anything went wrong, what went wrong. I then, using the pretty print library, print out um, the JSON of the object, the JSON object, but I specify that I only want to return the activities-steps portion of it and not the intraday portion of the JSON object. Finally, the return object I get gives me a JSON object with the date and time and the value of the steps, 5,484. So that was a basic look at getting your daily step count with the Fitbit API. But now we'll look at getting your heart rate for a specific day and a specific time and writing that to a CSV file. So here's the code running. Um, once again, I will show you how it runs and then go break it down step by step and go over it. So the first line is the essential URL that we're going to be requesting from the Fitbit API. So we have the usual normal URL, except instead of uh, daily step count, we're requesting the heart rate data. We are passing it a date of 27 May 2020, uh, specifying one day of data. One minute is the interval we want. Uh, and we're saying we want the data from the nine from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. The second bit of code is uh, I'm basically printing out the output from that JSON file request. Uh, you don't have to do this. I just do it to make it easier to debug. But I'm actually storing all that JSON I've pulled from the API in a data in the data object. Uh, you will then need in the final part to write it to a CSV file, uh, which will later be converted into an Excel file. You will need the CSV library for Python. So if you haven't installed that, just uh, install it with pip and add the import CSV line to the top where you've imported libraries. Um, here's the code block that actually writes it to a CSV file. So we start off with the specifying the heart rate.csv file that we are writing to. Um, we are also specifying W2 say we are writing to a file, not just reading. Uh, we're creating the writer object and pointing it at the CS, we're telling it it's a CSV writer. Uh, the actual data being written to the CSV file is done through a for loop, so for line in data. I've chosen to print every line we are printing to, we are writing to the CSV file. You don't have to do that, but writer.writeRowLine.values is the actual writing to the CSV file. And here we see the output of the terminal window when we run the code. It is uh, showing you all the values we get from the API while also showing you what's being written to the file. Uh, as you can see, we've created a heartrate.csv file uh, in our Visual Studio file browser. This is the this will, should contain all the heart rate data that we've requested, and when you it can be opened up in Microsoft Excel. Uh, what I like to do though is once it's open, save as into an XLSX file to just keep it make it easier to format and mess around with.